Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the January 2018 Mechanics M1 paper. This is from Edexcel. Um, and this question here is about vectors. We're told a particle P of mass two kilograms moves under the action of two forces. We have, let's call it force one, which is 2i plus 3j newtons. So I'll write it like this, 2, 3. I like to use column vectors in my calculations. And the second force, which I'll call F2, which is 4i and minus 5j. Remember the i and j, the top number represents i, the bottom j in your vector. Okay, so that that's horizontal and vertical i and j. So we want to find the magnitude of the acceleration of p. Okay, so it's actually under these two forces. So we need to find, we know that the resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration. If we need to find the acceleration and we know the mass, we need to know the resultant force. And the resultant force of two vectors, um, you know, two forces which are given in vector form, is basically the sum of those two forces. Okay, so I just have to add 2, 3 with 4, 5. That's how you find the resultant of two forces. Okay, and in vector form, you add them together. That's going to give us 6 and negative 2. So the resultant force is 6, negative 2. And we know the mass is 2 kilograms. So we can say that the resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration. We can say that 6, negative 2 is equal to 2 times acceleration. So the acceleration is going to be this divided by 2. So acceleration is going to be 3 minus 1 as a vector. Okay, so um, they want us to find the magnitude of the acceleration. So I got to find the magnitude of this vector, which is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus minus 1 squared. So 3 squared plus 1 squared, that's going to be 9 plus 1, which is 10. So it's going to be the square root of 10. Okay, so the magnitude of the acceleration is root 10. That's in a simplified third form. Okay, so that's how we deal with this question. Um, not too difficult. And that's in meters per second squared. Kilogram meters per second squared. Yeah, so it's going to be meters per second squared. Those are the SI units. Everything's in SI units, so it's going to be meters per second squared meters per second squared okay so that's the answer to six part a okay and we can understand why we have to add these together because when we want to add two forces together we want to find the resultant of two forces it's like we draw one of the forces so let's start say we're starting from here so the first force two three so you're going to go two to the right and three up okay so it's going to be something like this this is f1 then you have to add to it F2. So you've got to go four units to the right and five down. So you're going to end up somewhere over here. Okay, that's four minus five. So two and three and then four minus five. That's F2. And you know to find the resultant force. Okay, this is the resultant force, which is going to be three and minus one. Okay, that's the resultant force. So that's what we found when we added these two together. Okay, sorry, it was 6 minus 2. 6 minus 2, that was the resultant force. Sorry, not 3 minus. That's acceleration after you divided by 2. So the resultant force was 6 and minus 2. 6 across and minus 2 down, as we can see from this. So when you add the two forces together, you find the resultant force. Okay, and we found the acceleration... The magnitude of the acceleration is basically by using Pythagoras' theorem. Acceleration was like this. Okay, that's three across and one down. Okay, so we need to find the length of this line, which is done by using Pythagoras. That's why we do this. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. So acceleration was three, negative one. We might need that in this part of the question. Let's just write down three, negative one was our acceleration. So it says at time t equals zero, P, which is our particle, which we're considering, yes, 
it has a velocity of minus u i plus u j. So the initial velocity when time equals zero is equal to minus u and plus u. u minus u i plus u j. At time t equals seconds, so when time equals capital T seconds, then the velocity is 10i plus 2j. Right, so part one says find the value of t. So as we said, the acceleration we know is 3, negative 1. So what we can use here is the formula v equals u plus a t. So we know v is like the final velocity, right, which is going to be at t seconds. So this is going to be 10, 2. And u is the initial velocity when time was 0, which is minus u and u, plus a times t. So um, we, we know that this is going to be a times, and you have um, at t, it's 10, 2. Okay, so let me just... Sorry, not 10, 2. What am I saying? Acceleration times capital T. So acceleration is 3 minus 1 times capital T. Okay, so the T, capital, our T here is capital T. So this is our U. This is our V from our formula. This is our T. And acceleration is 3 negative 1. So we have here a, you know, equation where we have the I components and the J components, which we can separate out. So I know I can make two equations from this involving u and t, which will help us find what they are by, by, uh, by simultaneous equations. So I say 10 equals negative u plus 3t. That's formed from this. 10 equals negative u plus 3 times t. And you have 2 equals u minus t. 2 equals u plus t times minus 1. So these two equations together, I can solve them simultaneously. So what I can do is I can, I can add the two equations together. That will eliminate the u's here because I have the different signs. So if I add them together, I'm going to get 12 equals 0 and plus 2t. So that means 2t equals 12. So t equals 6. So I found the value of t. t is 6. And now we've got to find the value of u. So I can use this equation here, 2 equals u minus 6. So I'm going to have 8 equals u. So u is going to be 8. So we have t equals 6 and u equals 8. And that those are the solutions to this problem. So that's question number 6 that I answered because one of the students on the channel was asking, where's question number 6 for this paper? Well, <clears throat> Uh, it's there now, hopefully. Um, basically, I don't really answer questions from the older papers, pre-2020, 2019, um, unless I am requested to do so. So the older papers, the legacy papers before the new syllabus started in 2019 and so on, uh, those papers, I haven't answered every single question from them. Rather, I answer them by request. Yeah. So it happens, I guess that um, I was asked every single question from this paper, except for question six. That's why question six was missing, but now it is there. Um, so I hope that's okay. Thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular paper can be found, so the whole paper now complete, can be found in the playlist, which will appear at the top right of the screen at the end of the video. Other questions from this topic of vectors from um, M1 of and Excel can be found in the playlist over here, this part of the screen. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link, and you can watch a video up here which explains how to use my channel to find things that you might be um, you know, looking for. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.